before you overnight reboot and things were fine again. So the, the big information that I want to share is please let us know as soon as possible when things are happening that you need help with. But we really haven't gotten a lot of reports or complaints, so we don't know what to fix if you don't tell us and help us know where we know you are that we can fix this. So Greg, can you add anything? Yeah, it's a wireless network. It's the radios. We have over 200 of these radios scattered across campus. And, and uh, just like a radio signal from a car or your cell phone, there are areas that are stronger, areas that are weak, and um, there are variables in the environment that affect that radio signal. Some things we can do something about, some things we can't. Um, what we need to know, we're going to ask you those annoying questions. When you have a problem, we need you to report it to us. We're going to need to know, you know time, location, and device. What, what device were you using? It would also help if, if you have an issue and there are others in the area. Are, are, is everybody experiencing the same thing in the area at the same time? That would indicate that it's definitely a network issue and we need to correct that. Could be your device. It's one of those, you know, have you tried restarting it kind of things, right? Um, if, ever, if others are connected and are doing fine and you're the only one in the area at the time that's having a problem, that may indicate that it's your device, not, not the network signal or the radios. So, again, let us know. We need to know so that we can, so that we can correct the problem. It would be a, a business decision, and we don't manage the apartments in those. But that's something we'll take to the to the other administration and, and let them know that that's a comment. That would be, uh, that's curious. So, so what you're saying is a notebook computer is working, connecting just fine, but your smartphone trying to connect to the same wireless signal does or not work? Your, or is it your phone carrier? You may be on your phone's data and not the campus network. Okay, that's what we want to make sure, okay. And see, so that's something we're unaware of. That, that's, that's something we could try to track down. Um, there are many different phones there, you know, Android, is it Apple? Is it Android? You know, what, what device is it? Is it, we would look for something in common, some kind of pattern that would help us to try to troubleshoot that issue. But that's a curious one. Why would, why would a phone not connect to the Wi-Fi, but a notebook could may indicate, you know, that your, your notebook probably has a, a stronger radio in it than a cell phone, particularly, you know, my, my phone cost me 45 bucks. So it's probably not a great signal um, in terms of being a receiver transmitter. Uh, but, you know, there's a possibility too. So, but we could look and see if there's something in common in terms of the, the devices that are not connecting properly, we could try to correct that issue. But we need more information to be able to troubleshoot that. Yeah, that's a timeout for security. And it's because of the regular wireless is public, then we have to secure it because it's not just students that might be on it. It could be guests, someone just coming onto our campus. So that one is not the secure one. The secure area is it's a different login and it is more complicated. Thank you. 
you're seeing, but you're seeing secure air on your smartphone, right? You're seeing the signal. Hmm. Hmm. So I would suggest a visit to our help desk over in the Business 101 room and have a technician work with you on that to take a look to see if there's anything that we can offer to help with that. Hmm. Very good comment. Thank you. We will work on that absolutely to get that information out to you. Also, the secure air is going to be uh, more bandwidth for you. The Patriot Air is throttled, what we call limited in the bandwidth and the use, so it's going to be slower and be harder to do the things that you might want to do on the network. So I would highly recommend getting on secure air. If you're having problems, please let us know and we'll try to find ways to help you. Yes. For, yes, thank you for that question. She's asking, what, how do you report a problem? So if it's on campus, campus, it would be IT support at uttyler.edu. You can send us an email. You can call 5555, extension 5555, but IT support at uttyler.edu. And of course, if you're in, a, in one of the residences, that's, uh, there should have been provided a, a, a contact for Sudden Link. That's the support number there. We also have our web pages for the IT and Campus Computing Services, abbreviation CCS. So go to the Campus Computing Services website and it should have information to help you. We also have a new site called HelpNet Help Now and it's got links and things that can take you to some other helpful information. Yeah, if you go to help.uttyler.edu, there's a link that says something's broke. You can click that and you can submit a ticket that way as well. What would be a better way to get this information out to you? We, we have given it out at orientation. We put it in different emails. Yeah, you did say you put out emails and I, I remember receiving mine. So I've become like a wizard to all of my friends because I can show them how to actually log on to Secure Air. Um, maybe resend the email uh, periodically, uh, maybe once a month or something like that because people either forget how to do it or, or just their password changes and then they, I've signed them in and their password expired. So then I have to go find them again and they're helpless for a week until they see me next. Um, that probably that'd be the best way to do it and just break it down as simply as possible because we have different levels of computer literacy on this campus mm -hmm. for lack of a better term. Yes. Um, I think one way that might help to get the information out to students, everybody has like Twitter, Facebook, mm -hmm. get connected with the UT Tyler marketing department and like just instead of putting it through an email, send it on Twitter. People are going to retweet that, like quote the tweet, share it on Facebook, like, Everybody is on social media, or a majority of us are on social media. It would be there for the masses of students to see. So, I mean, that's what I would do. Great, thank you. And Good please, help. anytime you have ideas about how we can help you better, do not hesitate to contact any of us, email us any way you can. We want to hear from students. We want to help students. You are the number one thing in our lives, believe me. So we want to do everything we can to help you. Yes, sir. I'm from the Longview campus, and I'm not sure if we operate on the same Wi-Fi system or anything, but I noticed that I had an Android device, and with the recent upgrade to NuGet or 7.0, I wasn't able to log on to Secure Air, but uh, I switched to iPhone, and I was able to. And I, did you all have iPhone or Androids who aren't able to? Yeah, so it might be an Android compatibility okay. issue. Thank you. That helps. Anything else? Thank you very much. Um, just a quick side note, I do have the uh, Residence Life uh, 
number for Suddenlink. If you guys have any need any help with that, so just let me know. Um, we'll make it available on Blackboard for everyone. Oh. <laughs> oh. Okay. Um, next on the speaker's podium, we have Dr. Harold Doty. Well, thank you for inviting me here this evening. Um, you're actually asked me to talk a little bit about something near and dear to my heart, and that is the um, STEM building business renovation project. And I don't know if y'all have been by it today, but noticeable work started today. I was down there this morning um, about seven, and they had the bulldozer fired up and the track hoe fired up, and uh, they're starting the clearing process. So that's finally stuff that y'all be able to see. The project actually started about eight years ago that I know of. Um, the first I heard about it was actually when I interviewed here to be the Dean of the Business School. And President Mabry talked to me during the interview process about kind of a, one of the, the next big things on his agenda for the university was uh, to, to do something to expand the space for the College of Business and for the College of Arts and Sciences. And then um, I've been working on this project now for four years because it was four years ago when we were working with the UT system, trying to get the, through the state legislature, the tuition revenue bond financing. And that didn't happen. And then two years ago, when the legislative session started, so a little over two years ago, we started picking it back up and put it together and actually grew the building some. Um, and that went through the legislative process and so it would have been two years ago in May when they, they approved it, I think, when the, the, the funding came through. And the university was approved for $76 million. Um, $60 million of that was provided through by the state. And the University of Texas system allocated about $11 million in PUF funding. And the UT Tyler campus is responsible for about $5 million of it. And at that point, understand that with that funding in place, we, get a, we do a whole lot of great things, but there's still going to be space in, in both buildings that is not completely finished out probably. Um, as we go through it, the, the building down on University Boulevard is going to be 140,000 square feet. And for those of you who don't know, that's bigger than the two engineering buildings together. Okay, but that's what they call gross square footage. There's going to be about 85,000 square feet of space that we actually get to use in the building. That's classrooms and offices and laboratories and things like that. It's going to be finished in about 20 months. So we're going to move into it, not next fall, but the fall after that. That's fall of 2018, I think. And at that point, uh, about 60% of the building will be finished out. There should be seven to nine classrooms in it that will be ready for students to use. Uh, the faculty will be in there and we don't know who, everything that's gonna happen yet. That project is, that they issued what they call notice to proceed on that on October 11th, which is where the state tells the contractor start work. And then they put in, you saw y'all, everybody seen the fence up all the way around it, right? The construction fencing. That went up, tell all your friends, do not go inside the construction fencing. Um, they started that, then they, they did uh, the stormwater controls are in place now, and then yesterday they delivered the, the first track hoe and a bulldozer, and they'll start the process called uh, clearing and grubbing. And when they get that done, then they start the fun stuff. With the, the stuff you'll notice is where they come in and start driving piers in. So that project's moving along very nicely. The other half of that project that, that people aren't excited about yet is the renovation of the existing business building. And as soon as they get done down the hill with, with building the new structure, we're gonna move people into it. We're gonna move everybody out of the, the current business building, which will house the College of Arts and Science. That building's gonna be shut down for about nine months while we renovate it. Um, that's been real exciting because this week, in fact, I think it was one day this week, we had a meeting with the architects and the construction company and actually got the first 
brought closure, we think, on the program about what will go in the building and, and how the different functions it's going to house. And then in a couple of weeks, we're going to meet with the architects where they, they go through the process of actually trying to, it's called conceptual design. It's where they try to lay out how the different functions are going to fit into the building. And we've got our fingers crossed that everything we want to go in there is going to go in there as planned. Um, and then they'll start designing. So that building will be started in two years. So we'll wait till the new building's open. And then it's going to take nine months. Now, what that really means is my, my gut hunch is that, that that project will go a little longer than that because we really, there's, there's a pretty big rush on getting the, the STEM building done because we need to get it done in June of 18 so we can hold classes in it. But then on the renovation part, there's a little more time because, you know, classes are already started, so it's not quite as tight. Um, that's where we are right now. What can I, what can I answer for you? Questions? Yeah. Do you have a, uh, Do you have a uh, grand opening date for the alumni house yet? No. The, where we are right now in the alumni house, I think today I saw them, they're building forms and, and putting steel out where they're going to pour the next driveway. Um, we hope that that project will be largely complete before the spring semester starts. So mid-January is when we think we'll, we'll hit what they call substantial completion. And that means then, it, then it's, it's substantially done. You could actually occupy it. There's always then some, you know, the punch list stuff to, to track down and something that they're trying to get balances on the, the heating and cooling systems, things like that. But I think we hope that um, it will be what they call final completion before about the 1st of February. Yes, ma'am. Um, whenever you start doing the renovations on the current business building, I know the computer lab that or the open computer lab for everyone is in that building. Will there be another computer lab somewhere else for everyone to use? There are already other computer labs on campus for other people to use. There will be an open lab that's supposed to open day one, I think, in the STEM building. So when they get that open, there'll be space there. There's space in the library. There's, I think, in their space in, in RBN maybe. So we're, we're aware of that, and there will be some available space. We also find increasingly that what students need is access to power and wireless for their own, for their own system. So um, one of the areas that we're, and we got some time to work on this. We've got a couple of years, so it's not a, a, a burning topic. But we also, as more and more software moves over onto the cloud, it becomes easier to help students support with wireless connections rather than hardwired systems. What else can I tell y'all? It's going to be great, y'all. It's going to be, have y'all been through the pharmacy building? The, the, the new building that we're building right now is going to be as pretty as that when it's shaped differently and bigger, um, but a lot of the same types of features. I think, for example, we're using the same color floor tiles, and so some of those themes carry through. And I would tell you more about the... Um, this, the renovation, but we don't know yet because all we've talked about at this point is how stuff's supposed to lay out. We really are, are just working through budget things, and, and I can't tell you that exactly what we're going to change. I'll tell you some neat things. Um, we're going to have to cut some new doors into it. So um, one of the things we're looking at is, you know, the, the big auditorium? That turns out we've got to cut an outside door in that, so we're going to have to build some new sidewalks that we discovered. That was great. That cost a lot of money. Yeah. I know, I think the last time we had this presented, I was kind of infamous for questioning green space with this. I know that's it's all said and done. I'm, I'm excited for the new building. What it, moving forward though, with what are, what I guess, uh, landscaping features will we be looking for as far as, will there be any retention of anything over there? Over where? Uh, in the, the current fenced off area on. There will be, very few of the existing trees left kind of, you, you know, where it's, where it's thinned right now. Okay. That's where the building is actually going. And so I'm not sure that any of those trees are going to remain when you get into, and then kind of along the, between there and kind of along the front, 
on University Boulevard where the parking lot is now. The front part of that's going to be where the parking garage is. So those trees are going to go. Some of the ones in back, we hope to maintain it back behind the dam. And what we're going to have to do there, there are a couple of things. Um, one of the problems you have when you've got equipment and stuff into a forested area like that, even if you save the tree, because of the weight and stuff, you can damage the roots. So we'll have to watch that. Um, and then as we re-landscape it, we will be adding trees back in. And then, and, and this is kind of a neat thing. I don't know if it's going to happen yet, but one of the things that um, the, the associate vice president of facilities, our, our new guy, Jerry Steff, he's a great guy, just, just phenomenal and visionary. Um, he and I have been talking about one of the things we need to do is begin to think more about our urban forest here on campus. And one of the problems we see is as, as we do buildings, you know, landscape architects and designers always want to put in ornamental trees. And we're thinking what we really need to do is get our biology department to help us begin to clone or, or recreate some of the native trees in our, in our native forest types and try to begin to work some of those back into landscaping where, where they'll go. So the answer to your question is yes, we're going to cut down a bunch of trees. They were over there, pushed them down today. There's nothing we can do to stop that. What we can do is replace them with better trees. So I promise you no sweet gums are going back in. Okay, there we go. We, we intend to continue to develop a park-like campus. And I think everyone's committed to that. Um, yes, we're gonna put more buildings on this side of campus. Yes, as we start to move into what we're gonna, what they're calling now East Campus. Yes, we're gonna have to, in fact, I think they're getting ready to cut some recreational trails through there. So we have to manage our forest so we can live in it. And we have to repair it when we damage it, but we're committed to that. Yes, sir. Both of you, but one of you, go ahead. Um, is the parking garage, is that going to be on the same parking pass or is that going to be its own specific uh, parking situation? The answers to that question are not resolved yet. I can tell you what I think will happen is that it will be available to all of our community members. There will probably be an upcharge on using that facility. Um, and Dr. Patterson, I've been, been working and thinking about this kind of one of the ideas we have right now is that you'd have to have the normal sticker to go into it. And then in, instead of a, an additional fee, it'd be like a buck to go in. Something like that, two bucks just to, to go in and stay as long as you want and go out. But, but we don't have the answer to that yet. We're looking for solutions. How many, uh, Cars will be able to be housed in that parking. We think, and, and we believe if it's three floors, it's 312. But we're at about the 85% certainty level that we're going to get the fourth deck on it, which I think puts the number up between 420 and 450. And I don't remember exactly where that goes. So that's a lot. Um, and we're, we're going to lose the, the lot that's down there is lot 18. Much of it's going to get covered up, but I think there are about 120 surface spots that will still be down there in lot 18. So it will be a major parking area for the university. Yes. Um, what are the height clearances that we're going to be looking at? The what? The height clearances for vehicles. In the oh, garage. well, that, I'm glad you asked that because people who drive four wheel trucks get bummed out because they can't get into garages. Because I am from East Texas and I used to drive, I used to drive a Ford excursion, right? With the four wheel drive with a luggage rack on top. Uh huh. We added a foot to the clearance height from the normal height so that Bubba and his buddies can get into that garage. That means I can park. I, I drive an F-150 now. It's not too bad, but I am very sensitive to that. I talk to them as they're trying to lay it out. Anybody who drives a four-wheel drive pickup knows that it's a pig trying to get around corners in parking lots. They're supposed to leave enough turning radius that we can actually get around the corners without having to back up into a nine-point turn. So 
Um, I don't know how effective I'll be, but your concern has been addressed because it's one I am very familiar with. A uh, passionate, can y'all tell I'm passionate about that one? <laughs> When we lived in Syracuse, and they put us into a, yeah, New York, yeah, it snows a lot, right? So at that point, my wife and I owned three four-wheel drive. All of our cars were four-wheel drive. I used to drive a big, double, not double cab, but cab and a half F-250 with the, the full eight-foot bed and trying to park that beast in the hotel parking garage where they had us for a while. Uh, trust me, I, I mean, there were about five parking spots I could use. And occasionally, I'd just park it illegally and tell them, if you can find a spot where it'll fit in here, fine. but. So I'm passionate. I'm sorry, did I go off on a tangent again? I do that. What else can I tell y'all? It's gonna be great. I'm telling you that we're getting ready to forever and fundamentally alter the presence of our campus in the city of Tyler by building a beautiful building down there that will be highly visible. We're gonna open the university up to the community because everybody's gonna see it. It's going to make us grow more, it's going to boost our reputation, it's gonna be phenomenal. And for most of you, you'll get to see part of that and still be a student when we open it. Not everybody, some of y'all are gonna graduate, right? Okay, yes. No, uh, let, me, let me say, if we only build three floors right now, the answer is yes. If we build all four floors of it today, the answer is no. Anything else I can tell y'all? Well, thank you for inviting me here this evening. It's always a pleasure to get to talk with you. I have a nice evening. Thank you. All right, um, so it's not on the agenda, but we have a group from Global Patriots. Would you guys like to come up here and speak? Hi, my name is Shinomi Maxwell Parrish, and I'm here as the advisor of the uh, Global Patriots student group. And uh, what Global Patriots is, is it's representatives from the various international multicultural uh, student organizations on campus. And we also have a couple of domestic student representatives. And what Global Patriots is doing right now, along with uh, the Indian Student Association, is um, we, uh, they're co-sponsoring uh, International Fest, which is put on by the Office of International Programs. And it's the second annual event that's taking place next Thursday from 11 to two upstairs in the, uh, in the ballroom. And um, what, what we attempted to do today, uh, the Global Patriots Group, along with the Indian Student Association, we attempted to uh, get a sponsorship from Student Life and Leadership in order to purchase t-shirts for the event, which will go to students. And before I get into that, I'll tell you a little bit more about International Fest. Um, it is student organizations that, uh, well, the international and multicultural student organizations have presentations, and then there are also uh, students, international students on campus present their country. So they all get a trifold kind of cardboard thing that, that they're presenting photos of their, of their home countries. And then students who have gone on study abroad trips also present their trips and faculty who are leading international trips present uh, their upcoming trips as well. So um, what, what we were looking to do with student life and leadership was to um, to get a sponsorship for t-shirts for the event. And the t-shirts kind of serve, you can see them right there, they kind of serve to unify the event, to part, uh, encourage students to participate um, in both the, uh, the presentations that I mentioned and um, the flag parade that we'll be holding. We'll be having a flag parade with, uh, with international students from the 52 different countries that are represented on campus right now. Um, so they'll, they'll all be wearing the t-shirts, ideally, and then uh, the students who are participating uh, as presenters, as well as the students who are um, volunteering to serve food. International food is served uh, from various uh, restaurants around town with an international theme, and then um, there are also going to be performances by uh, international students at the event. So we were hoping... Um, to get that sponsorship through Student Life and Leadership, but since the event is put on through the Office of International Programs, there's, there's a bit of a conflict there because there's a, it's a, 
it's a campus department and the student orgs are trying to sponsor the event. But uh, Rada let us know this afternoon about uh, a sort of loophole with the senator projects. So I just wanted to make an appeal, I guess, to, to see if there was any possibility of, of sponsorship for the t-shirts for the event. So I think that's it in a nutshell. So if anyone has any questions and, oh, and I should mention too, um, we've got representatives, uh, leadership from both Indian Student Association as well as Global Patriots here, if anyone has any questions for them. So shoot, if you have anything. Yeah. Do you know about how many t-shirts you would need and the approximate cost of it? Yes, ma'am. Um, we would have, uh, we've got about 50 poster presenters, 52 flags that are going to be represented, uh, 40 food helpers that are going to be helping at the, uh, at the food booths, four stage helpers, and four runners. So 150 total for a cost, let me look at this, of, um, I want to say it's, $1,200, $1,200.50. Anything else? Yeah. I saw the events being held on the 10th of November. When would you need um, the, the t-shirt order to be placed? Because I think to, for us to have a Senator project, we would have a, a few I guess, lines of procedure we'd have to get through if I'm not mistaken oh is that right it's it's flexible it's yeah okay anyone else okay well thanks very much for for listening Okay, and again, this is not in the agenda either, but we have the African Student Organization here to speak as well. Thank you. Um, hi, uh, my name is Faith Okoye. I'm the president of the African Student Organization, and we're planning to have a masquerade ball on the 12th, and so I'm here to ask you for the funds for those. Uh, the funds go towards decoration and food as well. We're expecting about 70 to 90 people, hopefully. Um, this is the first time we're having this kind of thing on campus that's open to all students, and we're trying to make it an annual thing. So hopefully it works out. Um, so we're here to implore you to please to uh, fund our decoration and our food. Um, ASO is an organization that's open to all African students that are from here, and that just coming from African countries and trying to assimilate into the American culture. It's also open to every other person that wants to learn about the organization and about the people. And so this ball is supposed to bring all the uh, multicultural um, organizations on campus together, plus other students, anybody is allowed to uh, attend. Uh, we need about a thousand, wait, you, do you have my Excel sheet? We need about uh, $1,286 to make this possible. And I know that we turned in our forms late, but, and you have a role for that, but I don't know if there's anything you can do towards that. Yeah, thank you. Uh, do you have any question? Do you guys have any membership dues like yes, for this we organization? Do. Yeah, we, we already have that going towards that. Okay, so that's you guys are also putting yeah, your own yeah. money towards yeah, it's this. It's more than a thousand, but we need a thousand two hundred from you. But it's in about, addition to yes, what you oh, okay. exactly. Gotcha. We also have outside outside funding as well. Okay. Um, somebody's. Okay. I'm sorry. What did you say it was? A masquerade ball. The fall masquerade ball. I know, but like what date did y'all like? What day? Yeah. On the 12th of November. That's cool. A Saturday. Next Saturday. Any more questions? No? All right. Thank you. Okay. Um, is there anyone else here for speaker's podium? No? 
Okay. Well, hey guys. Uh, it's good to see everyone here. Um, I don't have too much to say this week, but uh, just a quick thing. Treasure and Abar and I are going to Austin this week for UT SAC, so we will be updating you next week about what we discussed. Um, also, I'm sure if you guys have seen on Blackboard, I, I uh, bolded and updated the uh, for those who are speaking this week for student voice reports. Um, I will start doing that from now on so you guys are aware of who is speaking and you guys have ample time to figure out, you know, things, concerns that are going on in your college to speak up during student voice reports. Um, also, if you guys have any, if you guys know any students who are interested in SGA at all, please let me know. Please tell them to contact me so at least, you know, we can have a full Senate if they're interested in any senator position at all. Other than that, um, I'm sure if you guys, you guys saw on Blackboard, got a notification on your phone. Um, the Sodexo survey is up. I contacted a Sodexo representative. Uh, they should be speaking next week, if I'm not mistaken. So definitely be here if you're interested in that, um, even though it's mandatory. <laughs> but other than that, do you guys have any questions for me? No? Okay. Uh, Vice President. While uh, Rada and Divya are going to uh, UT SAC, uh, Savannah and I will be going to ASGA, which is the American Student Government Association Conference. That'll be in Dallas. Um, that being said, um, with Devin being gone for soccer, that takes all five executive board members out of the out of town for this weekend. And there is a Patriot Preview Day um, that'll be hosted in the gym. Um, so I would like to get some people to volunteer to work our table on that day. I can be uh, more specific if uh, for all of the people who uh, come up to me and ask about that. Um, but I would like for us to have a presence there for the new uh, new people. But um, if we can't have anybody show up, then I'll have to cancel that. So I would very much like it if somebody could either A, email me or talk to me after the meeting about uh, working that table. It's on November the 4th. So. Did you guys have any questions for Vice President Compliment? Uh, I'd have to double check the email that I got today about the uh, time frame that it is, but uh, I can get that to y'all by the end of the meeting for sure. Any other questions? Okay, Secretary Martin. Hi guys. Okay, all I have is if you didn't get a t-shirt already, just come see me after the meeting and sign your name and I'll give you a shirt. Um, also, a lot of people have come up to me asking whether they're coming to the meeting late or leaving early, whether they have class or whatever it is. Please send me an absence form. You can come talk to me, get the actual logistics of it, but if you have class, you know, during our meeting or even if it's just a one-time thing, you have to leave early, just let me know. Even if it's last minute, send me an absence form with any kind of scheduling or whatever. So I just want to throw that out there. That's all I have. Um, so Parliament period, oh, well, sorry, I'm actually on my section. Um, so uh, like I talked about last week, um, I'll be giving like a breakdown of what we spent every week. And so um, this week, um, since uh, Advisor Neves, Vice President Templeman and Parliamentary Seely are going to the conference, we had to pay uh, $717 for this conference. Um, we had to pay for our two SJC clubs that we funded. It was for um, Beta Alpha Psi and Tri Beta. Both of one hat was for t-shirts and the other was for CCs. And then the last purchase we made this week was for the election and midnight breakfast flyers we had. Um, we paid $122.38 uh, at Patriot Printing. Um, other than that, this week I have been working on SJC stuff and uh, that's about it. Any questions? Treasure in a bar. Okay. Um, unfortunately, uh, Parliamentary Seeley had to step out because she's not feeling too well. So at no, thank you. At the moment, um, Treasure in a bar is now taking over the Parliamentarian role. So is there anything you want to say on behalf of Parliamentary Seeley? Okay. Any questions, Parliamentarian related? All right. Did you? Oh, okay. All right. Next is Student Voice Reports, uh, College of Engineering and Computer Sciences. Uh, yes. Okay, so the engineering students, they are asking a lot for a printing station in the RBN or RBS. So we actually have some computer labs where we can print. They have printers in there, but they're classrooms, so we cannot go in there during class time. 
and the computers are so slow, so it takes pretty long to print something. So uh, a printing station would be super helpful for the engineering students. And that's it. Okay, thank you. Anything else? No? Okay, thank you. Uh, College of Nursing and Health Sciences? Okay, sorry. Uh, me and Sarah talked with people this past week and two things we got were one, they wanna try and fit some type of like coffee shop or concession stand or something. I don't know where we're gonna put this in the nursing building, but it's just a thought. And then they felt like we take up more than half the library half the time. And so they're wanting like a separate study space. And then people talked about in the library how on the other side of the third floor, there's all those books, but I've genuinely never seen someone like check out books and I didn't know if there's like a way to like do something about this. I don't know. They want to put like, make that like a study area. I don't know how college of nursing is going to go about the library, but okay. just ideas. Um, okay. Thank you. I appreciate it. Is there anything else? No. Okay. And then freshman senators. Uh, okay, so as far as we know, the freshmen that came to us were like really happy about the blue emergency pull outside of O Hall. We thought we felt like super safe about that. And other than that, like we're chilling. Wi Fi complaints as usual. Okay, hopefully they answer your questions for uh, speaker's podium. Yeah. Was that it? Okay, thank you. Um, committee report student life. Uh, my committee talked a lot about um, some upcoming events that we would be looking into for uh, the fall. Uh, all of our bigger events are done for, uh, for the most part, for the, uh, the fall semester. Um, and then we looked into maybe uh, our preparations for Angel Tree. Um, to explain that a little bit, we would be taking um, – we would be setting up a table and people can take an angel and it has like a name of the kid on it and you go and get stuff for this kid for Christmas and then you put it back on the tree and we take all of that uh, to the designated location. So uh, we'll be looking into that over the next few weeks and then getting that set up before um, that time frame needs to be done so that we can get it all before Christmas break starts. Also um, for the showcase that the Patriot preview day that I mentioned in my section, that is two to five. Um, so that is the time frame for that. That's all I have for student life. Okay. Uh, thank you, communications committee. So Devin and I just worked on building or structuring a pamphlet that would pretty much be an easy way to explain student government, how to get involved and how to stay in the loop. Uh, just because it's a really common thing that we encounter, especially at info tables, uh, where people have no idea genuinely what student government is. And so by having a, um, a pamphlet we can hand out or some sort of flyer, it'd really simplify the process. We can give them a short summary, but if they're curious about how to get involved, whether it's through running for a seat as a senator, or if that's too much of a time commitment, they could come and speak in front of us about, about issues they're concerned about. We're trying to find things that uh, we can genuinely get the, the campus involved with, so. Okay, thank you. Um, rules committee? Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, sorry, SGAC. That's JC. <laughs> Hello. Um, so this week we met and we had two organizations that we discussed. Um, one of them was the Global Patriots and the Indian Student Association, which spoke tonight for Open Forum. Um, we denied their request um, because they are part uh, being funded in part by the Office of International Programs, so that kind of messes things up. Um, so we were not able to fund them. And then the second group um, was the uh, African Student Organization who also spoke tonight. And because they were not, they did not submit their paperwork on time, um, we actually voted to, or like, voted to uh, recommend, uh, recommended them to turn the paperwork in, you know, edit, to move their event date. And that was all. Okay, thank you. Um, Treasurer Nabar? Um, just to add that both of these um, organizations were declined slowly, oh, yeah. slowly because of uh, our SGAC guidelines and how they were formatted. Um, 
for global patriots, it states in there that it can be funded in part or fully by another department. And since um, the Office of International Programs is funding part of it, we saw the t-shirts were part of that event, so we couldn't fund that. And then the other one just was not submitted on time. Thank you, anything else? Okay, um, is there anyone to speak on behalf of Rules Committee? Okay, thank you. Um, for those in here that they did not meet this week. And then student affairs. Uh, we did not meet this week because I wasn't feeling well. Uh, okay. We will meet next Tuesday. Okay, thank you. And then residential life. Um, we did not, can you hear me? Um, we did not meet this week because um, there were some other events going on on campus that uh, committee men members needed to attend. Okay, thank you. Um, next, we have old business. Is there any old business? No? Okay. Any new business other than Swearens? Should I do Swearens first? Yeah, I should do. Okay, I'll do uh, Senator Swearens first. So, Paul Ross, do you want to come up here? You could raise your right hand, please. And everyone else as well, repeat after me. Um, um, I, your name? I, Paul I Ross. Miles Do solemnly swear. Do solemnly, solemnly swear. swear. That I shall faithfully represent. That I shall faithfully represent. The interests of the student body. The interests of the student body. Of the University of Texas at Tyler. Of the University of Texas at Tyler. I shall dutifully uphold and preserve. I shall dutifully uphold and preserve the Constitution bylaws. The Constitution bylaws of the student body. Of the student body. While ardently executing the office of. While ardently executing the office of our student body at large. Of the Student Government Association at the University of Texas at Tyler. Of the Student Government Association at the University of Texas at Tyler. Perfect. Thank All you. Right. Thank you. Thank you. Congratulations. <laughs> All right, is there any new business? Treasurer Nabar? Um, I would like to motion to open up discussion on the Global Patriots request. Second. Okay, all those in favor of opening up discussion on the Global Patriots request say aye. All those who oppose? Any abstentions? Okay, uh, discussion has been opened. Okay, so again, just to like state that this was, um, we couldn't fund this for department sakes, but um, we were talking about it and this could be a potential senator project. I think the purpose behind this event is great. It's bringing a lot of different cultures and perspectives to our campus. And I think it's something that would be a great thing to start considering that we haven't started any senator projects. So I would highly encourage um, someone to kind of pick this up. Any other discussion? Uh, Senator Hart. Senator Hart. <laughs> Isn't there like a cap on funding for Senator projects? Uh, there's a $5,000 oh, limit for that line. And just to go over uh, generally, this does meet most of the criteria that we set at retreat and in the meeting for uh, senator projects the only criterion that it does not fit is that the fact that it would be a permanent lasting thing um, because it is a one-time event um, however that's up for y'all to decide because that's not specifically stated so um, if this is something that y'all guys want to do it does meet the guidelines that we did set for that so senator zealand Just for general clarification regarding the $5,000 line, uh, is that per semester or per in, uh, like calendar school year? Per year. Um, uh, I would also, uh, I know this event is time pressing, so I know if we were to take any action on it, it would have to be done today. So it's up to you guys, totally up to you guys, but that is my two cents. Um, Were the numbers that they presented for the t-shirts, were they set numbers or just uh, estimates? 
I believe they're set numbers. They're, they're the accurate quote. Yeah. Okay. So they, we wouldn't have any leftover t-shirts that we could resell after the event or anything like that. That I don't believe so. I believe, well, I, from my understanding and from our committee's understanding, I think someone who is in my committee will be able to back me up on this or clarify if I can't, is that the uh, shirt amounts that they have set aside are for the volunteers for the number of events slash booths that they're having for the performers for their events. And they're having this flag carrying parade or flag carrying event going on. And so it'd be for each of them. So each of that, it would round up to around 148. So 150 would be the total number of volunteers they're expecting at this event. Okay, thank you. Senator Baker. I think it would have, well, it would have to be a formal motion, but. Uh, Senator, or, sorry, Vice President Templeman. All right, so to go over the protocol for this, um, you're saying that you're willing to take on this as a Senator project. So to, I guess, to make sure that we do this correctly, you would need to take this project on as your own and present the cost as something that you're willing, the, the Excel sheet that they presented, you would present that as your project cost and then the Senate would vote on it from that point forward. Is that correct, Josh? With that being said, I would like to make a motion to end discussion. Okay, yeah, okay. Um, all in favor of closing discussion, say aye. aye. All those who oppose? Any abstentions? Okay, uh, discussion has been closed. Senator Baker? Is that correct? Yeah. Okay. All those in favor of Senator Baker showing the expenses. Oh, it wasn't. Second. Okay. All those in favor of Senator Baker uh, presenting the expenses of the Global Patriots? Say aye. aye. All those who oppose? Any abstentions? Okay. Do you want to come up here? <laughs> uh, we have it up here. So she just explained it to everybody in here. Uh, I know about as much about it as y'all do, but uh, I think it would actually be a pretty cool deal. And I do, I do think it kind of adds that they all look somewhat alike and they're not just randomly walking around and it's just that kind of deal. So um, hopefully y'all help me out here. Senator Zerlin? This is less a question for the senator and more of a question for the treasurer. Uh, do you know how much we had left over in our senator project fund at the end of last school semester or school year? Excuse me. Give me a second and I can figure that out. But I believe it was uh, around a hundred or two hundred dollars. Okay. Roughly seventy nine dollars. If you want your if you Senator Novak. Would it be viable, viable to make more t-shirts and sell them after the event to cover the cost, hopefully? Um, no, just because this money is coming from student fees, we can't use that. Students can't purchase these t-shirts. Mm -hmm. 
Advisor So these are everybody that's already volunteering to this point. Um, so it sounds like that they, right now they want all the international students to um, sign up first and then all the volunteer spots left over are then up for anybody. Okay, so um, it sounds like that's going to be a variable where we're going to have to wait to receive the responses from the international students. But you haven't received all the responses yet? Okay. Okay. To more specifically answer Reggie's question, we would have to build in to the cost and add onto it for us to get every senator a shirt, um, considering that these are built for current volunteers. Um, therefore, the cost would go up if we were to choose to give all of the Senate a shirt um, without you having to volunteer. That would just be us getting shirts to recompense us for our endorsement and our financial support. Thank you. Senator McDaniel? Um, if we all put a shirt in, I don't know who they're getting ordered from, but couldn't it potentially lower the cost too if it's a bigger bulk? Can you repeat your question, oh, please? Sorry. Um, I know like some companies, the bigger the bulk, like the lower the price. Couldn't it potentially like lower it if we all were to get a shirt? Treasurer Navar. Well, I know understanding my committee, there was a specific reason that they went in this company because not all the sizes were available with the other companies that they checked. So I can't completely answer that question, but that's kind of what we had learned from the why they chose that vendor. Senator Ross. I was just curious of how many volunteers are actually already signed up and is there a threat of they're not actually being 150 volunteers signing up and there being an excess of shirts. Yeah, I was wondering how many volunteers were currently signed up already to participate and uh, is there a risk of there being less than 150 volunteers actually signing up for the event to participate? Um, Advisor Neves? I think you have to, we have to make a motion. Oh, I was messing. Yeah. Make your motion. We need a first end discussion. 
Um, can I entertain a motion to end discussion? Well, I need a motion. Senator Zerlin? All in favor of ending discussion, say aye. aye. All those who oppose? Any abstentions? Okay. Discussion has ended. Uh, Senator Baker? I'd like to make a motion to open up discussion on my sender project uh, involving t-shirts for the, um, a, a, with a co-presenter from Office of International Affairs. All those in favor of opening up discussion on Senator Baker's um, center project with the co-presenter of International Student Affairs say aye. All those who oppose? Any abstentions? Okay, discussion has been opened and you are free to come up and speak. Uh, Senator Rivera? Yeah, so Treasurer Nabar said that th if we took this on and we voted yes on this, we are like, whatever action would have to be done today. But you said that you have two, you're giving your international students two extra days um, to decide whether or not they can. So what if we order if we say yes on this and we have 150 shirts and you only have 70 volunteers, what are we going to do with the rest of those shirts? Okay, so. Okay, so let me introduce myself. My name is Nan McClurg. I'm one of the uh, employees at the Office of International Programs and I'm also uh, an advisor to the Indian Student Association. Um, we we are pretty confident that once we open it up to all of the students on campus in general, that we will get plenty of volunteers to fill all 150 positions. Uh, last year, this is our second annual event, so we hope to do this uh, every year. Uh, last year, we had uh, uh, a little more than half of the number of volunteers we have up here. This year, we have more because we have... Uh, our campus has 51 different countries, students from 51 different countries, plus we'll have a veteran carry the flag of the U.S. in the front. We will have a flag parade that starts uh, close to the, um, the um, Meadow Gardens, I think is what it's called, by the arts building and down uh, halfway around the uh, small lake and to, to the uh, Harvey Deck and then do the opening ceremony at the... Uh, uh, at the beginning of the event um, up on the third floor at the ballroom. So those students, uh, we have 52 students that will be carrying those flags, so we already know we will need that. We have uh, uh, 27, we had 27 booths last year. We expect about 30 or so, and 25 are already signed up. And at each booth, we will have two to three, depending on what they're doing, interactive activities or uh, presenting. So we'll have two to three people presenting their countries at each booth. So right there, we know we have, uh, you know, uh, 50 people that we will need T-shirts for. Um, we have uh, some stage helpers that we're waiting for. And what we're waiting for is specifically the food booths. We're waiting for vendors to finalize uh, what they're going to be serving, bringing, and we will need people to help us serve food. So um, the positions that we still have open, I know that we will fill them. And when we fill 150, you know, that's all the positions we have. Uh, we won't be able to take any more people. And the reason why we're wanting the decision now is because we're placing the order for the t-shirt and we really need to make sure that they are uh, done in time. Um, the only potential issue I might have with it, would you be coming to SGA every year for the like for the t-shirt order to get the money from SGA? Uh, I, I don't uh, know how this is going to work out next year. And so we will try to get some funding from uh, now that we're building a nice uh, representation from businesses in the community, we hope to turn to them for support in the future. Last year, we had eight or seven or eight restaurants. This year, we've had to, at 13, we had to say that's all we can hold right now because we don't have the space for all of them. So 
So I, I think that we will find more support in the community next year. Motion to close discussion for your presentation. Motion to open discussion for ASO. Um, all in favor of closing discussion, say aye. aye. All, all those who oppose? Any abstentions? Okay. Um, the discussion has been closed. Um, just to clarify, nothing has fully been done yet. Um, if we are going to continue with this, we need to vote. Uh, Senator Jawad? Okay. All in favor of um, approving Senator Baker's uh, center project? Right. All in favor of voting for Senator Baker's center project, say aye. All those who oppose? Any abstentions? Okay. All those in favor of approving Senator Baker's center project, say aye. All those who oppose? Aye. Any abs okay, I'm sorry, we need a hand count. All those in favor of all those in favor of approving Senator Baker's center project, please raise your hand. Okay, all those who oppose, please raise your hands. Okay, and any abstentions? Okay, Senator Baker's uh, Senator project has been approved. Um, any other new business? Senator, Senator Adebayo. Motion to open discussion for um, ASO discussion. I'm sorry, for what? ASO, African Organization, whatever. Okay. African Student Organization discussion. Okay. So. Um, uh, no, I'm sorry, I need a second. Okay. All those in favor of opening discussion on the African Student Organization say aye. aye. All those who oppose? Any abstentions? Okay. Discussion is now open on the organization. So, Senator Rivera, did you say you denied the, you guys denied the funding, or is this dependent? Um, so, I guess I'm going to speak on behalf of, as she's a candidate. Um, we deny it, well, we didn't necessarily deny it, it's just we wouldn't, we weren't able to review it because it wasn't submitted within the guidelines. So, we didn't really be able, like, we weren't able to meet with them because either way it didn't meet the guidelines, so it wouldn't have been passed at either way. Um, Faith Ugly, um, can you guys um, like move um, the date? I'm sorry, they are not allowed to actually speak because they're not part of the Senate. Um, but would you like to end discussion and have them present on your behalf? Yes, please. Okay. I would like to open discussion for presentation. You need to end discussion. I would like to end discussion for... You need a motion. <laughs> Sorry, motion to end discussion. Motion to end discussion for African Student Organization. Sen uh, who pointed an order? Uh, yes. Yes, I believe so, yes. So with that being said, do you still want to end discussion? Yes, I just want to ask them, would they like to um, push the date forward or just, yeah. Okay, you will have to end discussion and then reopen a motion in order for them to present for you. Okay, motion to end discussion. Okay, Wish. all those in favor of ending discussion say aye. All those who oppose? 
Any abstentions? Okay, discussion has ended. Motion to open discussion for their presentation. The pre presentation of African student organization. Okay. All those in favor of, I'm sorry, I need a second. All those in favor of opening up discussion for allowing the African, African student organization to present, say aye. All those who oppose? Any abstentions? Aye. Okay, I'm gonna need a hand count. Um, all those who approve, please, can I get your hands, hand count? Okay, all those who oppose? And all those who abstain? Okay. Um, what did we just motion on? Okay, it has passed. So you are more than welcome to come up here and speak on her behalf. Um, when you say move the table. Um, do you mind giving her the mic and I'll give you this mic? Okay, you said to move the date forward, but if I move it forward, does it start from today or from Monday when I turned it in? Does the, uh, does the approval start? Yeah. Okay, so yeah, we can move it forward. I mean backwards. Yeah, it's, it's possible. So in moving this backwards, this allows their event to be in SGAC guidelines and then we fund them through SGAC. Is that correct? Second the bar. Um, so moving it backwards, they turned it in on Monday, correct? October 31st. So I'm assuming by November 13th would be the minimum day or the November 14th or November 13th would be the like earliest we could do it. The event. Vice President Templeman? They have to come back to you in a different SGAC meeting to get that funding again. Okay. Motion to close discussion. Okay. All those in favor of any discussion say aye. All those who oppose? Any abstentions? Okay. Discussion has ended. Do we have any other new business? No? Okay. Um, advisor comments?
Okay, thank you. Um, any announcements? Okay, Senator Rogers. Okay, I'm gonna to speak to you as Student Veterans Organization President right now. Um, next week is Veterans Week. Um, it's a big deal for me and your student veterans. Um, on Monday, there will be, we'll start the scavenger hunt. It was a big hit last week. So if you see little army green men next week, bring them by the VRC, you might get a prize. Well, actually you will get a prize. Um, there is also gonna be a 10K run uh, in that morning, uh, hosted by HPC and your student veterans organization. On Wednesday, your student veterans organization is gonna feed you the stand. It's a hot dog joint. It's another option outside of Sodexo, and we all know about Sodexo. Um, <laughs> uh, uh, to, uh, to make sure that we don't interfere with the International Fest, we don't have anything planned on Thursday, but Friday, uh, we're gonna have, uh, I want everybody to wear red. Uh, red, uh, the acronym stands for Remember Everyone Deployed. Uh, seriously, we still have soldiers, Marines, sailors still deployed. Uh, we still have uh, our POWs and our MIAs uh, from past wars as well. So if you can wear red on a Friday, the, November the 11th, that'd be awesome. Um, I have a couple of t-shirts left. If you want to stop by the VRC, I can get you one. Um, also that Friday, we're going to have a, uh, a, we're going to have a country concert uh, out by the O-Hall. Um, it's going to be a camp out because when we wake up on Saturday morning, there's going to be a team relay obstacle course that CAB is putting on and uh, sponsored by the SVO. That's all I gotta say. Okay, thank you. Any other announcements? Uh, Secretary Martin. I just wanna remind y'all, if you need a t-shirt, sorry, please come see me after the meeting, that's it. Thank you. Any other announcements, Treasurer Nabar? Um, so the National Success, uh, oh God, the Society of Leadership and Success is having a fundraiser at Chili's tonight. 15% of the pro, uh, pro, uh, proceeds go to us, so. Definitely go to Chili's tonight. <laughs> Any other announcements? No? Okay. Second. Okay, all in favor of adjourning, say aye. aye. All those who oppose? Any abstentions? Okay, Secretary Martin, if you can dispense second roll call for me, please. President Ray Boston. Here. VP Templeman. Here. Trojan Abar. Parliamentary Seeley, Senator Adebayo, Senator Adeshola, Senator Allen, Senator Balaji, Senator Baker, Senator Bell, Senator Cantu, Senator Castellanos, Senator Dockery, Senator Dyson, Senator Franklin, Senator Guy, Senator Hart, Senator Huck, Senator Joe, Here. Senator Johnson, Here. Senator Kosuch, Here. Senator McDaniel, Here. Senator McLeod, Here. Senator Morris, Here. Senator Mosley, Here. Senator Nefrady, um, regarding, how do you say your name again? Nagarajan, I'm sorry, Senator Nagarajan, um, Senator Novak, Here. Senator Fagundes, Senator O'Kelly, um, Senator Ramirez, Senator Rivera, Here. Senator Rogers, Here. Senator Ross, Here. Senator Saad, Senator Severn, Here. Senator Shaka, Senator Stockton, Here. Senator Tan, Here. Senator Thomas, Here. and Senator Zuerlin. Okay. Meeting adjourned.